Twitter yeah, and all those things. Where am I calling from? Uh, Texas. Austin. Thirteen. Thirteen. And That's your name? Sure. You said your name was. Ha- you said your name was Harrison. Yep. And you're and you're a Giants fan. Of course. All right. All right. We're, we're, we had some technical difficulties. Our CEO. I don't know if you listen a lot, but our CEO well, yeah, doing, Marco. Guys, should be hearing us now. He's yep. on vacation, right? So mm-hmm. yep. Marco's on. Va- Marco. He's a big wig. He's on vacation, and he left us some guy named Todd. Right to just oh, run yeah. and stream oh, okay. everything, and and, and yeah. Todd right now is having a difficult time. So we're gonna start the show over. I'm not Harrison, having any. Dude. You you want to... Okay. Right. Todd, Thanks, shut up. Yeah, <laughs> shut up, Todd. Go in the pe- we... Harrison, I just put Todd in the penalty box for you. We can't hear him. So right now he's just working. Here we go. We're gonna start the show over. Welcome to the Bleed Big Blue Podcast. Dedicated coverage of the New York football giants by your hosts, Marco, Trifecta, T. Merritt, and JBW. Welcome, everybody, to the Blue Big Blue Podcast Show. Jimmy D., your Trifecta. At the lead tonight, our CEO, Marco, too good for us, on vacation. Living it up in sunny Florida, and we got a call to start off the show. I got Justin with me. I got Tim with me already. Todd's running the thing, and he's already in timeout. Harrison from Texas, 13 years old, is going to lead us off. What do you want to talk about Giants-wise, buddy? Go ahead. Okay, so I want to talk about uh, the draft. So I I personally think that they should get a quarterback, but I don't know. What do you think? It's tempting, right? Yep. It's, it's, it's so tempting because I, I, I think I, I, one thing about me, I, we know how Justin feels about Saquon Barkley. He's all in, right? And, and I think with me, as we get closer and more information is come and coming out, I'm not necessarily being sold on taking Saquon Barkley at number two, but I'm starting to understand why people are so intrigued with taking Barkley at number two. Talent-wise, you can't argue it, right? He, he's yeah. he's so good. He's a three-down yeah. back. He's explosive. Uh, okay. He can pass protect, right? Nothing. Yep. And, and, but, but it really comes down to this, and I think Tim and Justin, we've argued about this and we've debated it, and I'm, I'm, I'm curious to know where you stand on it, Harrison, right? So, we're of two mindsets. We're closer to a Super Bowl than I can see taking Saquon Barkley. But if you think this roster needs a lot of work and it's not one player away, are you better off taking the quarterback? And if not taking the quarterback, then trading that pick so you can get as many assets as possible to get as many players to rebuild the roster. What do you think, Harrison? I would live, I would trade it. I would trade the picks because you want assets. You know, uh, is this kid a plan? No, not at all, Justin. Uh, <laughs> not at all. This is a legit. Call. Who do I know in Texas? Come on. I, I like it. I like you, Harrison. I just want to put it out there. I, I like where Harrison, your, your head's how long, at. How how long have you been listening to the show? Is this your first time calling? I know it's your first time calling in. Is this your first time listening? Them. I thought last, but they're sorry. Doing this, uh, a, a, a podcast. <laughs> We've got mom there. <laughs> he, 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 your mom's about to get, he's about to get in trouble. 
<laughs> Harrison, thanks. Harrison, thanks for calling in. Keep listening. If you want to talk a little bit about your opinion later, feel free to call back in right now. Great topic to start off on. I'll even bring Todd back in on this at a timeout, but watch your tone. Justin, right. Tim. Hey, I, knew, I wanted to hear Justin, a long joke Tim, towards that the, kid. The table is yours. You know where I stand on it. Come on. Let's, I know you two right now are split. Let, let's get a little debate going. Justin, wh- what do you think? Number two pick, what are you doing? So here's where I'm at with it, right? I, I'm, of the, I'm of the mindset that there is a clear pecking order in this draft. I'm saying I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm admitting that. But yeah. if if you think that if Saquon Barkley truly grades out as the first or second best player in this draft, and you have a player like Odell Beckham and a tight end like Ingram that can stretch the field or come across the middle. You know, Saquon Barkley could do a lot for this offense. Now, this offense has some other needs, and you can't just load it up with position players. So, in my mind, you take Barkley if you're committed to using, you know, resources in the next two seasons to bring in three or four offensive linemen. Right? And then – you either deal with Webb or who last year we were begging, you know, let's not waste the pick. The kid's pretty good. Or, you know, you take you take a quarterback later in the draft. This NFL season has proven that you don't need a game changer at quarterback to to be successful. What you need is a game plan. And McAdoo couldn't put a game plan together to save his goddamn life. Adult language, I'm sorry. But well, you, know, you, know, you, know, you know some adult language is coming in this show. Tim, Tim where do you stand oh on it? Where, gosh, where do you my, ears. my ears. Well, you know what? The one thing I got to say is I saw something today that made me happy and almost getting on to the point where we might not need to take quarterback. Supposedly, Davis Webb went into uh, Gettleman's office and talked to Shermer and Gettleman in the, either within the past day or two or whatever. And pretty much said, I have the talent, I have the drive, I can be that quarterback. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm about to surprise everybody with, with, with what I'm about to say, but we got somebody calling in. Let, let, let's take the call. And if you're listening... The call-in number is 516-453-9383. One more time for those of you at home, 516-453-9383. Caller calling in, 917. Where are you calling from? What's your name? Uh, you know you know me already. Uh, Jesus, oh, no. Yeah, same old it's shit. <laughs> well, well, since Gosh, it's you, it's since, okay. since I love you, Ned. You, what up, buddy? I'm not going to stop Ned, my oh train my God, of thought there. Right, so let me yeah. so, so let me go ahead and I want to I want to say a couple of things because I think we clearly know where I stand, where where I stood prior. Right, so we didn't talk last week. I wasn't on the podcast last night. I fell asleep, so whatever was discussed, uh, I missed out. By the way, um, in quotes that he was asleep in quotes. I I, I was passed out. I was in a coma for a good hour and a half, bro. Okay, so don't don't start with me. Now, I will say this. Before, I, I was all of the mindset of either you take a quarterback or you trade back. The more, the more, I, it's, I I think you take Saquon Barkley. Oh my God! Oh, what are you James, doing, James? Sir, I, 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 you I, I, I hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me let me let me let let me let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. Okay. I'm as as we as we all know. Hold on. Hold on now, because let's take this into consideration here, okay? 
There are going to be ebbs and flows into this whole thing. There's going to be information coming in and coming out and coming in and coming out. And feelings are going to change before now we get to the draft, right? So where I am right now, I saw a video yesterday that really changed my mind about things. And The one where Davis Webb threw to Evan Ingram? No, it wasn't just the one throw to Evan Ingram. It was the series of throws. And more than that, yeah. more, than watching, more than watching the throws and the arm strength, because I knew that was there. What impressed me about that, and again, no rush, no coverage, was the footwork. And what I saw was a huge improvement yeah. from, yes. from year one early in preseason, college Davis Webb, to what I saw in a brief snapshot in a couple of videos, accompany that with the information that he went in and had this conversation. If what we're hearing is the rebuild on the offensive line they have a plan for, if the cuts coming are going to give them more money to where they can fix that offensive line with two pieces in free agency and maybe use a second or third round pick on a guy, I'm starting, I'm starting to become very intrigued with the fact of getting my hands on Barkley right then and there. Yeah. Discuss. Uh, Okay. Oh my god! Nice. First of all, nice. you you blew my. I thought me and James were on the same team. I don't know what happened I'm, last night. He was coming. I'm not saying I Tim. I'm not happened. saying I'm not on the same team. I'm not saying I'm. If they traded the pick back, I think that's the smart, safe move. But, but if they can find a way in free agency to fill a couple of needs. And by the time you get to the draft, they have pieces in place to say, you know, the picture that we're looking at now has significantly changed. Ah, Barkley's his talent is extremely intriguing. Uh, and don't you, you know what? Go ahead, Ned. You know, go ahead, Ned. You've been on. I I don't have – as much as I've seen a few people in the comments say, say it, I don't have a vendetta against Saquon Barkley. And I legitimately think he will be an amazing player. I think what the major crux of the issue is is that it's not just the offensive line that has holes here. Uh, as much as I would like to say, even even if Webb, even if Webb fills our hole at QB, and they fix the offensive line through free free agency, we still need to grab linebackers for the new setup. We need to probably. Uh, and I think get you cut out. Corners. Okay. Um, we need we we need uh, linebackers to for the new defensive coordinator. We need we need cornerbacks for uh, well, or at least one to replace Eli Apple, preferably two for death. We there there are more holes than just the offensive line and the Q B and those holes can be fixed back at the trade while also giving us amazing value for the future as well in case anything goes wrong. Well, it, no, I, 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 I agree of... with you. I mean, I, I don't, I think the thing more than I'm trying to say is, is uh, I'm, I'm okay. If they took Barkley at two, I don't think I'd be storming the castle. Uh, especially
want to compete next year in your secondary, you better bring back Cockrell. I mean, he played well. I mean, especially he he for what he was. I mean, uh, there, there, there's a move that Reese gets no credit for, right? I mean, that was a – that was a – I, I also yeah, I think that'll get me more intrigued than anything. I, I think it, I'm anxious to see who goes. Like, I, I want to see who's out the door. Like, I, th- this locker room was toxic. Toxic. And there was zero leadership. So I I have zero allegiance to any of these guys. And, and I want to see if Gettleman has the balls to start just getting no. rid of guys. I, I disagree with you. There's one, uh, th- there's one person that I, I would say to keep. Snacks. Snacks. Snacks played hard throughout the entire season. Snacks needs to stop worrying about Twitter. <laughs> yeah, he, he gets a little, he gets a little fired up. Uh, Snacks needs to stop worrying about Twitter and start playing just some football. Oh come on! Don't act like he didn't play well last season. Nobody there is played rumors well though. Season. Nobody. There played is rumors well last that they're going to talk. They're talking about trading Bergen. Nobody played well last season. Nobody. I don't care what your name is. That yeah, defense was atrocious. That there, defense there was, was full effort. It was embarrassing. It was embarrassing, that defense. The team as a whole, offense, defense, special teams, embarrassing. And I don't give a shit who they – they can cut them all and bring back a bunch of kids that will play hard. Well, Jenkins, my, my point was I, I don't uh, think Barkley is – as valuable to this team as filling up the obvious holes that we have right now would be. If we could get, you know, if let's say Buffalo gives us three or even four first-rounders, that's nearly like guaranteed uh, guaranteed talent to fill those holes versus... Saquon Barkley addressing a kind uh, a kind of need. I, I wouldn't say the need at running back is as desperate as the need at um, you see, linebacker. I, I don't, yeah, but you have because, to. You, you know, it, it's the it's the age old question when it comes to the draft, right? Are you drafting for like I'm one, and this is one of the reasons why I'm starting to lean towards. You know, I understand where we are and what we can get. Now, if you want to talk package, it's going to take a lot more than 21-22, a second-round pick, and Cordy Glenn. Yeah, I know. Like, I, like I, I'm looking for a first-round pick next year, too. And yeah. one of your late-round picks in one of the next two drafts. Fifth round or back, yeah. preferably the fifth. Yeah, I, I mean, last night I said, um, you know, we could get three uh, first round picks and two second round picks, and then an additional third round. I, I think is what I said. And then, or we could get four first round picks and a second round pick from them. And you could legitimately take them for all their worth for this pick. What I want to see is with Glenn obviously being included in both trades, but. What I would like to see is that investment towards rebuilding in the future because I feel like as much as Saquon Barkley is going to be a star, we can pick up uh, running backs and free agents if we're not satisfied with what we can get in the second round or what we could get at 21-22 or 
what we could get in free agency. I just feel like there are a lot more good running backs available than uh, than um like the ability to fill up our whole uh, the holes on our team besides running back with good players. What do you think, Justin? You know, what it comes down to for me is, you know, we've done so much of taking the position of need with, you know, Jerry Reese and company. We've always pinpointed a position early in the offseason, and everybody and their mother has known that that's what the Giants are going to do. If they're really serious about taking best player available, if that's more than just lip service, right, if we're changing the culture, if we're bringing in all this change, then the pick is Barkley. And it's not a bad pick because you're pairing him with Odell Beckham and Evan Ingram, who had the best season of a rookie tight end last season. So you have a great squad. The last time that a team put together a running back of Saquon Barkley's caliber, caliber and a wide receiver of Odell Beckham's caliber along with a quarterback it was the Dallas Cowboys with Michael Irvin, Emmitt Smith, and Troy Aikman. Now, listen, Eli's a little bit older, and so we're not going to get into that type of run. But with that talent, you can you can put in a quarterback at any point. Recent history in the NFL has shown that you can get a quarterback at any point in the draft. You don't have to spend that number two pick. And if they're thinking about starting Eli next year, you're starting Eli to win. So if you're – if you take a player like uh, one of the quarterbacks, you're punting on this season. You might as well either trade the pick or take Barkley. Taking one of those quarterbacks is just indicating that they're placating the fan base and they're playing for next year, which is exactly what we did, you know, throughout our entire career with Jerry Reed. So it really comes down to me about whether or not you believe that the culture is changing. I mean, at this point, I choose to because I have no reason not to believe that. I don't know. Am I crazy? <laughs> not, not at all, man. Not at all. But I'm going to tell you right now, um, we have double audio going on, and it's driving me insane. Um, I don't know who, who you know whose computer's on, or if you're on a if you're on a mic, or you know whatever. But you know, please, please fix it. Um, I want I want to get into the fact that uh, as far as the, the Barkley thing, guys. Yes, I, would I complain if Barkley uh, became a giant? Absolutely not. But I do think Gettleman's going to be able to fix this offensive line. We're going to be a lot better this coming season than we were this year on the off- offensive line, I think, no matter what. I think it's going to be a two-year project to where we get to the line where we want it to be. But uh, there's neither here nor there. They're already making the right moves. It almost sounds like Norwell's a done deal that he's going to come here. I'm hoping that's the case. If if Andrew Norwell comes to the, the left guard, Brent Jones is going to get re-signed. He's a restricted free agent anyway. They're going to get him cheap. So we get our center back. They already, they already re-signed John Greco, who played well the last game of the season, who could be a starter. And I've already heard rumors that they're trying to – Resigned DJ Fluker to come back as a guard as well, which tells me they want big boys to run the ball. Put Eric Flowers at right tackle next to Fluker or Greco, and you you definitely got something there. 
And then, you know, maybe we we bring in a tackle, like like Solder. You know, that's the only one I can think of at the moment. Or maybe we draft somebody. Who knows? That went off to my six. I'm with Ned as far as the fact that uh, as far as we got to get this linebacker core going, and that's why you need to trade. If you're not taking a quarterback, which Davis Wells is doing everything that he, I think he should do as far as saying, yes, I'm the man, let me play. And if he's doing all the work that they say he's doing, and he's, hey, I'm all for it. Trade back, grab some <clears throat> linebackers, you know, in the first or second round, especially if we're not taking quarterback, trade with Buffalo, get the Kings ransom. We can grab a running back at the end of the first round. We can grab a, a running back really in the second, third, or fourth round that is going to be solid. Especially when we fix the offensive line, the, the running backs are going to look good anyway. And I'm going to tell you right now, if we have a better offensive line, Wayne Goldman might be even look better. I think so, a lot of people aren't really oh, – no, sorry, go ahead, Tim. No, go ahead, man, go ahead. Okay. I say what a lot of people aren't really – I think cause a lot of people are so caught up in what we're going to do and, like, what we need to do in their opinion. But I think a lot of people are realizing that we're kind of in a good spot here. Like, no matter what we do, go through – like, let's go through all the strategies that have been possibly thrown in our way. Either two, we take a quarterback who's going to sit for a couple of years, right? Um, for one, I, I'll list them out. So number one, we take a quarterback who's going to sit for a couple of years, right? I'll, the positives and negatives to that is negative. He won't be doing anything for a couple of years. Positive, he's going to be able to sit under the greatest quarterback in our franchise. He's going to have Pat Sherman to coach him, right? And he could possibly be the future of our franchise, right? But, uh, so the option number two, we take Barkley, which personally isn't mine, but I'm not going to go into why that. The, the pros to that is we have literally – the greatest talent since LT slash AP have came into the league, right? And he can impact the offense immediately. The negative to that is that no running back has ever won a Super Bowl by himself, right? And I think uh, Ned talks about that a lot, and he makes some pretty good points about that, about how even a great running back is not – like even a great running back is not worth a good quarterback, you know, because the quarterback position is Absolutely that not. strong. Then, a, exactly. And then, and exactly, and then Justin talks about how, but this it, lately we've seen in the NFL that you don't need a great quarterback to succeed; you need a great scheme, right? So then, option number three, we have we trade back and just grab the best players available, right? The positive to that is we get to plenty of trades; we get to just rob people of stuff that might not even be worth it later in the future. So we just kind of take a W, right? Worst case scenario, we end up not being able to make strong enough moves in the off season, and, and then we can't do much in the pre in the in the draft because we traded it back, but later we'll have to look forward to later, right? So what people are understanding is that it doesn't matter what we do, as long as the Giants don't do something stupid like grab, uh, what's the defensive end, Chubb? I forgot what his first name is. Like, unless we do something like that and just waste that second-round pick, we're pretty much in a good situation here. So, like, there's no reason to have to storm the castle pretty much no matter what out of the three options we do. We shouldn't have any storming the castle bad decisions during this year's draft. No matter what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you right smart, now. Chubb, we'll have a pretty good situation. Chubb is not. First of all, I would have no problem with Chubb getting a pick, getting picked. Oh my gosh! Ugh. I want to tell you right now. There, there's like five. I think there's like, what are they saying? Like, probably about six blue chippers in this draft. As far as uh, talent wise, you know, one being Quentin Nelson, the guard from Notre Dame. Uh, Mika Fitzpatrick, the safety slash corner from Alabama. Uh, obviously Barkley, Chubb, Bradley Chubb from NC State, and uh, you know, and there's some debatable people in there as well as far as like a uh, Derwin James, uh, the, you know, safety slash corner from Florida State. There's all you know, Roquan Smith, Georgia linebacker. My point, you know, my point was we don't necessarily – we keep saying Buffalo and, like, we we have to move back to 20. It could be we move back five picks. And if we don't want that quarterback, we should actually take advantage of the fact that we don't want the quarterback. Because we are in, just like you said, a prime position. And that, and that is where, you know – 
you know, and that's why we got to take advantage of this spot that we're in right now because the fact is, you know, <laughs> the luckily we're not usually there. And I really don't want to make a habit of it because this season, this season crushed me. By the way, is, is everybody else still on the podcast, or we just mute everybody, or everybody just left? No, I'm here. Ooh. Oh, J- J- Jimmy was echoing, wasn't he? Maybe, yeah. Huh? What was that? Who was the one echoing? I think it was Justin. <clears throat> no, I'm here. It might have been. Oh, it wasn't you then. Maybe it was Jimmy. Is Jimmy present? Maybe you left to fix the echo. That's probably what it was, yeah. Jimmy. Captain Negative is gone. Yeah, I don't know what to do now. Well, he's also switching sides now. Captain Negative! <laughs> Rest in peace. Rest you will be well, I'm going to tell you right now, guys, the offensive line, I don't think is that far away. I don't think it is, yeah. I think we're really cool. I honestly think that at the end of this offseason, we we're going to see Norwell. a lot of improvement. If we get Norwell, I think the pieces are almost already there. We just need a we need a left tackle, which is easier said than done. But we just it needs somebody, even if it's for, you know, just a, a band aid for a year, you know, before we get, you know, send a draft pick in there. But I don't think there's that many good tackles in this draft either. No, it's, not a tackle, it's not a tackle heavy draft, that's for sure. Nah, I I've, I've heard guard, I've heard it's guard heavy, I've heard it's center heavy. But uh it's definitely not definitely tackle, not tackle heavy. And Somebody everybody in the have chat seen was that. talking about that on what the best left tackle was in this draft, but there's there's none that's worth even the high second round pick. If we really, really want to left tackle, I wouldn't go that I wouldn't go that far. There's Mike uh McGinty, the left tackle from Notre Dame. He's worth a he's worth a first round pick. Now we're gonna see what you know the scouting blunt combine is uh, next week. We're gonna see where some of these guys rack up. I personally like Orlando Brown from uh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Uh-huh. The, the biggest thing with Orlando Brown, I like pedigree because the fact is, if your dad played in the pros and he was a good pro, that tells me that you know you knew how to get there. And you, you know, you were obviously blessed with the talent. Hence Eli, and all, you know, all guys like that. But Orlando Brown, his his dad, with the same name, was nasty offensive lineman. And if he, I'm pretty sure he was uh he was the one that got hit in the eyeball with the uh, with the refs. Yeah, there was the yeah. ref, uh, the ref flag. So you know, and he was good. Before he lost his freedom, his eyesight because of that. So there's 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 people there, but let, let, you know what? Instead of Barkley, wouldn't you guys let, let's say, if I could say, you know, I don't let's not even say names. I'm gonna give you the second best running back, and a, but I'm gonna give you a a linebacker on top of it because you didn't take Barkley. Wouldn't you guys take that? Over Barkley. I mean, yeah. Yes. But the thing is that that's I mean that's a what if though. But the thing is, it comes down to this: how much more talented is Barkley than the other running backs in the draft? And if you say a little bit, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna lose my fucking mind. Like he is so much more. Like he is without a doubt. Hey, what, uh, what do you think? Uh, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let me. Captain Negative. Back. So listen. <laughs> Thank you, Jay, for being uh, I, 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 I get it, and I'm intrigued by Barkley, too. I've already said that, but, 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 right? At this point last year, none of us would have thought that Kareem Hunt and Alvin Kamara would have outproduced Leonard Fournette. So I, I think that it's very unfair at this point to start saying, this guy is going to be better than this guy to be better than this guy. Like I can totally see a scenario where one of these second round running backs is right up there with Saquon Barkley in terms of talent. Once he ends up in the 
in a situation where, you know, he's being used the right way, much like a Kamara or a Hunt, et cetera. But you can't – we don't know. These, this is a deep class. And you have to remember one thing about running backs. Just because one goes really high, that other second and third running back may not go for another full round after that pick. But you have to remember, a lot of these teams don't value the running back position very much at all. Yep. So it's difficult I mean, to say, it's player, difficult right? to say where the gap is talent wise on some of these guys because the the position as a whole isn't valued for some of the reasons why we're making an argument why they shouldn't take Barkley. So I mean, so, to, just to say that Barkley is light years ahead of all these guys. Like let let's see them on an NFL level before we start handing out you know gold jock jock straps. Like just slow down. And Jimmy, and I know you, you you watch film, and you know you know the guys I like. I'm I'm a, I'm a Nick Chubb guy. I like him. I he reminds me of Rodney Hampton. I, you can grab him in the second round. You can grab a John Kelly from Tennessee in probably the fourth round. And I'm um, and again I'm not like dude I'm I'm mm-hmm. honestly not opposed to any of it. Like I I, yeah. I don't I'm not sitting here. Saying that it, I'd be if you told me that they were going to trade back and they ended up with Chubb in the second round and at one of that picks on one of those picks, uh, second round pick, or they can trade back and get an extra second round pick and they use one of those picks to acquire Chubb and they get another first round talent either at linebacker or offensive line, I, I'd be thrilled with that. I also, but I'm, but I'm, all I'm saying is, is I, I'm not against trading the pick. I, I, I think that overall safe, smart thing to do would be to take the pick. What I'm saying is, is that the more I watch film of Barkley, I can see where the allure is to take him so high and get your hands on him when you could. I'm a hundred percent with you. You're exactly where I'm. Yeah. Thinking. That's why I'm almost not watching highlights on Saquon Barkley. Part of I, part of me, part of me is head. praying that the, part of me is praying that the Browns shock the world and take him. Part mm-hmm. of me, and it and, and, and it puts and it puts everything into a flux, and now the Giants have no choice but to trade the pick. And so the Browns, if, if you don't. Right, Justin. I mean, I and I, I don't know. Like, I, I'm to the point Justin where because I was all about I was all about this, that, or storm the castle. And right, and, and the more I look at it, I'm like, I, I, if they took Barkley, I don't know that I'd storm the castle or be upset. I think I would be excited because we have Barkley, and I know what that talent is. If they trade back and acquire an extra linebacker, I'd be thrilled because of the young depth now we acquired. So I, I, I don't. I, I I can see both of it, and I think that I'd be okay with both of it. Both are very intriguing options. You can sell both to the fan base. Uh, I I don't see a downside with either if if they decided to take Barkley or if they traded back and and added a, a you know a, a bunch of different guys. Uh, but I'm starting to see where you were, Justin. Where the more I'm more film of wa- watching of Barkley. And I've watched a lot more over the past 24 hours after seeing the film of Webb and hearing the story about Webb. So, you know, he's also fresh on my mind. So it's, you know, it's sort of like that thing, the last guy you saw. Right now, um, I I can definitely see where the allure is. You understand talent-wise where he is. And uh, you imagine putting him with Beckham and Ingram and Shepard and the fact that you say, oh, if you can build the offensive line and make a move or two in free agency, where now we're excited about the re- offensive line being potentially rebuilt, maybe adding another later round pick offensive lineman as well, then you, then you get to the draft and you start saying, wow, we got Norwell, we got this guy uh, at the offensive line, we got this guy from the, to, to to add to the offensive line as well with what we already had with Brent Jones and you know Fluker or, you know, pick a guy that you want to throw in there, and, and you say to yourself, wow, now, well, we got Barkley to put behind those guys. Wow. Like, now I can see it. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, and, and I think yeah. that we'd all be excited if they make some moves on the offensive line and free agency with the other weapons they have. I think we'd all be excited if they got Barkley 
I think that we'd also all be excited if they traded back and got a King's ransom and then they hit yeah. some good prospects in our eyes or, in, you know, in, in some of the experts, quote unquote, eyes that, you know, could contribute at different positions, whether it be corner, linebacker, or offensive line, running back. I, I can see both ends of the spectrum now, and it's less having to do with the quarterbacks. I mean, that's what I was saying earlier. No matter what we do, as long as we don't just Cleveland Browns our pick, we, we're in good shape, at least when it comes to the draft. Right? I think we can all agree here that our defense is going to take longer to fix, and it's going to be harder to fix than our offense is. Right? Well, that yeah, that to me right now is that to me right now is that to me is a huge concern. Like I. I yeah. I think that you that this defense is a mess, especially if you're Absolutely. going to go to a three four. I mean, you pretty have, have you pretty much have two positions set in stone. You have nose tackle and you have one of your safety spots with Collins. I mean, you could say Jenkins, but I mean, is he going to get suspended for 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 being a douchebag at some point this season? I I don't know. Would I be shocked? No, not at all. Especially no. after what happened last year. So you can yeah. you can make an argument that they have needs that I mean I don't know that JPP can play defensive end in a, in, a, in a three four, I don't know that Vernon can play defensive end in a full sixteen game season in a three four. I also don't know that Vernon can play outside linebacker in a sixteen game season in a three four. I know I need a bunch of other I need three other linebackers at least, and even if you want to give me Goodson. I still need three other linebackers because I need depth at middle linebacker because I don't trust that Goodson can make it through the season after this season. Plus, I need a stud uh, 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 middle linebacker that I can consistently bring in. So there's money that I'm going to have to invest. I need another corner, especially if I'm going to trade Apple. I'm going to bring back Cockrell, but I still need one or two more guys there. I need another safety. I mean, it's th- there are needs all over that defense. And when you're switching a scheme – it, it takes a, we've talked about this a couple of weeks ago. It t- there's a weeding out process. You know, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to assume guys can play in a three, four, you're going to bring them into camp and start the season. And you're going to go, wow, we were wrong. It, it, it's not going as smoothly as we anticipated. And you're going to have to adjust on the fly and then fix it in, in, in the, in the seasons to come either through free agency or the draft, but it's not going to be a snap of the finger. No, no absolutely not. You know, and that's, the one thing we got to start watching, you know, the free agency coming up, you know, especially with new coaches coming in, they're going to bring their people in. So we're, we're going to see who, who Shermer steals. We're going to see who Betcher steals from Arizona or, you know, or just through their past. They're going to bring in their own people. We're going to see who's on board and who's not. From what I saw in the interview, you guys see the interview with uh, Kyle Horton and Snack? With who? Uh, uh, Snacks and uh, Colin Cowherd. You guys see that no. interview? Uh, no, I didn't see it. Well, no. Snacks pretty much said he was uh, hesitant to be the captain of this team because he saw how the locker room was. He pretty much said probably about 60% of the guys didn't give a shit. Well, that's troubling. Yeah. That's terrible. And, that's it, troubling. and that's that, terrifying. that bothered him. And you know, for the people that are Odell haters, Odell was not one of them. He's like, actually, he was, when he came over to the Giants, he said he was very surprised Odell was the way he was. He figured he didn't have to practice like that because he just had that kind of talent, but he's working hard at all times. You know, I, you know, you know we, I, I get it about Odell, but it, it's not that tough about Odell that that bothers you. Like, you get it. Like, you can tell that yeah. he's passionate. And I, and I don't doubt that he works hard while he's between those lines on the field. It, it's some of the decisions he makes off the field that are the issue. And it's some of the decisions that he makes while he's on the sideline or after the play's over between the lines that, that, is, the, that is the issue. It, it, it's the pretending you're a dog. True. Hey, man, you're, well, he you're also does have a, he also does have a camera on him ninety nine percent of the time. Granted, the you know when he's on a boat, that's his fault. But uh, you know when he's on the sidelines and all stuff, you're gonna get pissed. You there's you know, I'm not worried about any of that stuff. But I definitely am all about and uh, Snacks did bring up Eli Apple as a, one of the kids that needed to grow up. You know, and that you know, with that being said, 
you know, I want to let's weed out people. I want to just like Jane said. I'm I'm curious who who's going to get cut in this off season. I know there's going to oh, be I'll at least a kid. There's gonna, there's at least going to be at least one or two surprise cuts that are going to come this off season. I just have a feeling. Like, give me the kids. Do you guys think Marshall's getting cut? Yes. I Marshall's, think he will. Marshall's definitely getting will. cut. <clears throat> I think he's like, going to yeah. get the I, cap. He's going to get he's cut. Marshall's I gone. I think every one of us, let's, uh, why don't every one of us go through and pick two players that we would cut right now? Uh, if you guys want to do that. All right. Cut. Um, Marshall, Marshall and Apple. Marshall and who? Apple? Apple. I think he's a cancer. Okay. Yeah. What about you, Tim? Uh, as far as cut, I'm almost from stuff I've heard. I'm almost on the. Even though I backed him up and I've seen improvement, I almost want to cut flowers. Okay. Um, you but, got one more. Oh, it's good. First of all, Marshall's cut. Period. Let's let's. Marshall's cut. Okay. All right. Uh, t- uh, James, what about you? JPP and Jenkins. JPP and Jenkins. That's a troll. James is all about saving that cap money. That's a troll. I'm just kidding. All right, me? Uh, I was going to joke first and say, like, Odell, but after, after James just said that, I can't make that joke. Uh, I would immediately go with Apple just because it's cancer. I don't appreciate anybody being like that on this team. I don't think he deserves the right to be on the team no, that's, But that's so – hold, hold on, guys. Hold, hold on. Those are easy, easy, though. Those are the guys that we know are gone. Like yeah. Marshall and I'll, Apple, I'll, we know we're gone. I'll think out of the box. Like, I'll think out of the box. I'll think by box. I'm cutting – and this is going to sound like a shock at first, but I, I think it's a big deal. I'm cutting Pew, and I'm cutting Richburg. You can't cut Pew. He's a free agent. They're both and, he's free, a free, and, and Richburg's a free – you gave us two guys that aren't I'm coming toxic. back anyway. I'm toxic. I'm toxic. I'm toxic. I'm toxic. I'm toxic. Hold on. Uh, okay, DRC. Okay. No. Nah. Listen, DRC. I don't think he's doing it. DRC got value in. DRC got value in the defense because he does. Uh, oh, better. DRC's gone, guys. DRC's gone. He's gone. He's gone. I disagree. I they're I gone. Think JPP. They're going to bring Jenkins. They're going to bring Jenkins. They're going to bring Jenkins back. They're not going to cut. See, I think Jenkins is a cancer too. I think Jenkins is a complete fucking me, me, me. I, I, I think Jenkins is a complete cancer. So uh, I, that's why I, I JP and JPP I think is a complete moron and a cancer. So like uh, that's why I went those two guys that had nothing to do with it, it was that I it needs a cleansing and I those two guys would be. It would be to get rid of them. All right. So I'm going to give you two players that we haven't mentioned yet. I'm going to say John Jerry. John Jerry and BJ Goodson. Ooh, there's a surprise one. And I'm going to give you one more, actually. Um, Brad Wing. See ya. <laughs> oh, my God. You stole that. No, ah. The goat punter. All right. <laughs> Um, the goat hunter and Rojas. If we're going after kickers, get rid of him. Who wants Rojas is the best New York Giants in the history of our franchise? All right, you come yeah, down. Yeah, exactly. Best player in our franchise. Rojas wants fifteen grand to show up. Yeah, fifteen. What was one? Fifteen hundred for an hour and a half. Yeah, right. fifteen hundred for an hour and a half. All right, guys, we're gonna cut the fat. Um, we're going to. Uh, I. We're going to cut Red Allison. And no um, way we cut Red Allison. There's yeah, no way no, we Red Allison. No, they got plans for Red Allison. They got plans for Red Allison. My boy Red produced last season. They got, they got plans played. for Red. It was already a Schirmer guy. He already played with yeah. the Vikings. I mean, he just all, literally came okay. from the Vikings. Dude. <laughs> well, if he came from the Vikings, then yeah, no. Perkins, Perkins. I, I'll tell you I'm one cool thing I would do. I'll tell you one thing I would do. I would definitely draft a running back, whether that be Barkley or take one in the second or third round. I would target one of those kids. I think there's plenty of depth at running back in this draft. I think you'll get one of the running backs. Uh, you know, there's a, there's something to be said about um, Gallman as well. Um, nice, not thrilling. He's nice. 
I'll tell you the guy who intrigues me in free agency is um, the kid from Minnesota, the running back. Jeremy McKinnon. McKinnon. I want McKinnon, McKinnon so bad. McKinnon. They, there, there's already McKinnon. rumors that they're very, 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 very much. Special. If they sign McKinnon, I mean, I'm going to need some private time. <laughs> but that, but that, see that now, now now that's the thing, right? Does that change? Does that change the whole draft? Like does McKinnon does McKinnon take McKinnon take the foot third off down of? Back, man. Well, that's the back, thing. Is like, but 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 you're no. gonna have to pay him McKinnon, a little bit. You want uh, M- McKinnon's gonna want to no. play. No, he's not. Yeah. Be, he's not worth it. He's not worth over the club. McKinnon's good. He's he, he will suffice. But he, I'm not well, saying he's worth. I'm not saying he's worth it over – listen to what I'm saying. I'm not saying he's worth it over Saquon Barkley. But if you you bring in a guy like McKinnon, okay, does that take the – does that take the foot off of Barkley knowing that you have McKinnon and you can go with more of a committee at running back and not have to take a running back at number two? Nope. True. I'm not sure. I I, I agree with you, but I'm going to give you another running back. That screams Giants all over it to me. All over side. Oh, okay. You think if, the Forty Nineers can let him go? Carlos Hyde reminds me of a Giants running back. I'm not saying he even gets to us, but uh, he reminds me of like a smaller Brandon Jacobs. Are Are we going to go wow. as far as to say Casillas is gone next year or no? Yes. Oh, he's gone, and he's gone. He should have been gone last year. Yes. Yes, he's gone. is gone. I think Casillas is gone. I think there are. I think a, a like whole bunch of guys are gone. 32? I think Casillas is gone. I think Kennard is gone. Okay, we got one guy in the chat that's losing his fucking Burke? mind over the thought of grabbing Jared McKinnon. Honestly, even if we do grab Jared McKinnon, I think in no way does that take Saquon Barkley off the table. Like, like realistically, it, like, let's say we draft, uh, we we sign McKinnon. I don't think it, it takes off the corner off the board. Well, yeah, if you're going to do that, down. then I think McKinnon's a waste great. of money. Well, Saquon Barkley is I mean, a three-down yeah, back. McKinnon's not going to want to play ten percent of the snaps. Exactly. Like he's not gonna, he's not going to come here to play. I mean, if you if you're going to draft Saquon Barkley, then you I mean, that, that's what I'm saying. Like so, like if if you know the pe- free it's agency is going to tell us a lot. Because if they don't address the back. running back position in free agency, you got to think they're definitely going to address it in the draft. And that they're going to probably end up taking Barkley with that second pick. If they bring in okay, a guy like James, McKinnon, you got to think that they're more adept to maybe passing on a guy like Barkley and taking another know, guy James, or trading the pick. James, I don't know because think about it. Our run, besides Tiki Barber, let's leave Tiki Barber off the board. The time we were most successful in our running game was when we had a two back system. We had Ahmad Bradshaw, my favorite giant of all time so far, and we had Brandon Jacobs. Yeah. Right? Can you yeah, but you. But, but what, what, what I'm saying and, is, you're not drafting Barkley. Barkley to spit. You're not drafting a guy at two to split carries. Exactly. I, I get that. He, I get that. What cow. I'm saying is, if we're that committed, you're, you're, to you're, you're the giving ball, him. He's a guy show. that's getting twenty. He's getting. He's a guy that's getting twenty-five to thirty carries per twenty-five a game, thirty touches a game. If you're taking him at number two in the pick, that's what you're. He's a running back. He's a rookie. He should produce right away. He's a third. So, how many carries is McKinnon getting? Six, maybe. No. I, you're, you're Where are McKinnon. his carries coming from? How many? How many rushing attempts are you getting per game? They don't have to be carries. They can be passes. It's as well. about. It's, it's about touches. It's about. It's about playing time. It's about snaps. Yeah. And McKinnon, exactly. it's it's about playing time. It's about snaps. And to think that McKinnon is going to come to us to sit behind Barkley in this league with some of the teams that have money and his talent is absurd. He's going to go someplace where he's going to be an integral part of the game plan. He's not going to be the the legit second fiddle. I, I got my yeah. head off. Um... Bye, Ned. My only friend. You don't think you don't think we could get McKinnon eighteen touches? I think no, we could get not with Barkley. And get Saquon not with Barkley. I think we could get them both. You're get, so now you're getting your running backs forty three touches per game. 
Guys, we still have Odell, Ingram, and Shepard. You're, you're, you're getting the running back. You're getting so you're we getting the running back. Forty three touches per game. Forty. That's true. We have too much talent for our own good on the offensive side of the ball, guys. <laughs> Literally, man. Give, give well, Barclay that's why you don't pay for McKinnon for if you're good. getting Barkley. Exactly, yeah. Tim. Exactly. We just have so much it's one of the on the offensive side of the ball. It, it, these young it's kids one of the nowadays. Other. It's one or the other. Sure, okay. <laughs> McKinnon is not. If, if you're Jarek McKinnon with that talent, after splitting, after playing nearly nothing behind Peterson and getting a little taste now with Murray and contributing on that team and getting the showcase that he had and being a free agent, running backs don't have a big window. This is McKinnon's time to get paid, and we don't have the money exactly. to do it. And he's going to want to play, and I don't blame him. He's going to want to play. He's going to want to play a lot, and he should. He's a hell of a player. It would be unfair yeah. to him. Like, like I don't see like, – like McKinnon going to a team like that has Ezekiel Elliott or Le'Veon Bell or what's, uh, the, the team that drafts Saquon Barkley to me makes no sense. Well, it, it, it's not even about playing time. It's about who's going to pay McKinnon the most money. He didn't well, come in as a high draft pick. It won't be. Yeah, he didn't come in as a high draft pick, and anybody who's going to pay him the most money is going to want to play him. Somebody's going to pay him five, six million dollars a year. It won't be us. Yep. I'll tell you that. No. No, because we're not in a position to overpay. But there's a lot of teams that are in a position yeah. where if the market is for for him, then you can, you know, if there's other teams bidding, that you can lock him up at a, new, at a number between five, six by just guaranteeing an extra one, two, three, four million, something like that, depending on what the numbers end up being. It, he's going to go where he's going to get paid and he's going to play. He's not going to be a. Uh, but if he, if he ended up signing here, you'd have to think that that takes that, and that's what I'm saying. Like if it, if he ends up signing here, you would have to be like, you'd have to like crook at your head a little bit and go, oh, well, uh, that seems to not fit. But well, you know, that's, what? that's why free agency is going to be interesting. It was like the Shane Vereen when he signed with us. It'd be like the same. Yeah, that thing. worked out well. There's another exactly. guy that's gone. Waste of money. I thought it was. I, I think we bitched about it when he got signed. He signed anyway. Cleanse the roster. Yep. And as far as the money, I really, I've been seeing a lot of things on the cap. The way everybody's talking, Eli's got one more year with us. Then he, his contract is coming off. JPP probably has one more season with us. Then his contract's coming off. And I think they're already trying to trade Vernon. Yeah. But if they don't, his contract will come off like in a year or two. They're they're gonna start they're starting clearing house, and that's why they're not worried necessarily about the cap because they can push a lot of crap to next year. Especially if they uh, give extensions to Odell and Landon Collins, which would probably happen in the off season. Well, TikTok, man. I mean, it, it's coming. What, what, what yeah. day is free agency? I mean, this is all going to move fast so fast. Yeah. Well, kind of, scouting combine is next week. And what, when's well, free agency kick that. off? Well, the, 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 it's April. Isn't the it? 14th of March. March. Oh, yeah. March 14th, right? It was April last year, I think. March no, it's always in March. Signing day. March, oh, 12th March, is the, March 12th is you can start legally tampering or whatever they call that shit. Yeah, and then goes, that's when you start. That's really when it starts because that's when all the announcements start coming out is that day. Yeah. And then they, they just become official on the 14th and stuff. But the 12th is when we start having some fun and hearing some rumors. And you'll hear rumors well, prior to that, yeah. you know, starting in the next couple of weeks. But uh, the 12th well, the is when I'm, I'm saying, shit starts aren't getting we tampering, done. Aren't we tampering when it comes to Norwell? I don't really think so. You haven't really heard anything from the Giants in reference to Norwell. You've heard a it's bunch of other parties like, assuming. Like, hey, um, you better come here. We're going to make you the highest paid guard. If you don't, um, Drew Rosenhaus is going to have some issues. You know, with well, I haven't heard. I haven't heard any. But yeah, yeah. But I all that is like you know third hand. Like you, you, you've heard absolutely nothing from the Giants. So. Unless the Giants did something and sent that message to Norwell or got a message to him, um, uh, and somebody can prove that, it, it, you know, it's really the Giants really can't be, you know, 
Uh, it, it, how many times during the course of the last couple of years at this time of year have we heard a hot rumor about a free agent going somewhere or a guy who's going to get released going somewhere or, or something like that? I mean, you know, if it's not coming from the team, if the team didn't make an effort or a public statement about it, if there's no back channel movement where, you know, something shady is happening, you know, it, yeah. it's, you know, it's all bullshit. All right, well, here's uh, Ned's final uh, goodbye message to us as he left. He said, uh, tell the guys, here's my final message. Cut Harris. I'm pretty sure he means Dwayne Harris. And then he has a question as well. He says, has Rosas been good enough to stay? No. No. Absolutely not. No. He, he, there's no – nobody's got a guaranteed job, especially a kicker. It's about how to go back in junior. Jeez. I'm just saying, I honestly think the only pe- people in this, like, in our team right now who have a guaranteed job, like, got a guaranteed job is, like, Odell and Landon. And Eli. I, yeah. And Eli, obviously, even though I wish, you know, whatever. But I just wish the guy would take a damn pay cut. I mean, he's getting paid enough by Gatorade. <laughs> Listen, you know what? Let him get his dirty dancing on and get off his ass. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Let's get James yeah. rant on that. Let's go. <laughs> Come on, Jimmy. Let us hear it. Uh, How much you hated Jesus that game? I thought it was great. If I could put uh, on screen right now, I would. Of course In fact, did. I could. I'm just not going to. You know what? The um, French rush. You know, who, you know who was also in that commercial? The guy we Brent just Jones. resigned, uh, John Greco. He was, he was one yeah, of the Greco offensive linemen. Yeah, how do you guys feel about Greco? You guys think he's going to win a starting job? You know what? That team is a team building exercise. Is that commercial, guys? Team building. You should have done some of that during the season. <laughs> well, you know what? Oh, Mac and Dude didn't want to. That's why Mac and Dude doesn't even have a job right now. Benny. Benny Blanco from the Bronx. Is it pretty bad that our off, our both our head coach – and our defense coordinator didn't even get hired by anybody else? No. Uh, <laughs> not really. I mean, the way things ended, I mean, it was ugly. I mean, <laughs> you lost complete control of the I mean, locker room, you know? I mean, he's he's got to do a lot of rebuilding <laughs> somewhere. Yep. He's got to do a lot of rebuilding somewhere. Going back to the whole, like, players and cutting – Somebody in the chat said this, and I've been hearing this a lot. I'm not sure if it's 100% true, but somebody said that uh, there's reports saying that DRC is willing to take a pay cut and move to free safety. How would you guys feel about that, like keeping him, but if, if he wants to do that? How would you guys no. feel with that? Fine. I'm fine with it. How much of a no? If he wants to, he wants to take a, no? a pay cut, that means he really wants to be here. So I'm cool nope. with that. Goodbye. If he wants to- <laughs> page cut. I mean, if he wants to take a pay cut, it means he's he he knows that if he gets cut, he may not get another job. True. Well, I it's, think, you know, it's, it's it's Dominic Rogers for Martin. Nice. Well, he's also at the point of his career, dude. He's at the end of his career. You know, he doesn't exactly. want to pick up and move his family. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I, my family is not his concern. <laughs> not my concern at all. Well. You know, and that's where I think he would be. Like, okay, I'm willing to stay because I only probably got a year or two left anyway. I I think you got to get rid of all of them. I think they were all problems. You got to. I'm just I'm just done. I'm just done. I'm done with them. I'm done with them. I, I just I, I want fresh blood. I want fresh blood. I want young kids. I, I just want kids that will keep their mouths shut and play hard. Kids that aren't worried about millions of dollars. Kids just want to play football. And you, I mean, you get exactly the sense you, you, you get the sense that you get the sense that, that that's not what's going on in that locker room and that's a concern. And it's gonna be very interesting over the next couple of weeks to see what exactly happens and, 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 and you know, who was you know, it's gonna be very obvious to see who they thought was a problem because those should be the guys that are out the door pretty quickly. And yeah. uh, it's going to be interesting to see some of the guys that get moved via trade, via surprise cut, um, and or if they're to the point where they're so desperate just to bring back and try to win in this window that they're just going to bring back this talent to just try to say we're going to throw it together and see if it sticks again. And that's a dangerous proposition. But uh, we're going to find out over the course of the next three, four weeks or so. 
Guys, yeah. I'm going to wrap it up tonight. Um, yeah, that's uh, cool. I, I got to be up at 5.30 in the morning. Go. Yeah, one question. Definitely. What is uh, what does gentlemen have to do in this off season to gain your respect? <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, he, he's the general manager of the New York Giants. He he got my respect. I I, I just don't think that he. I, I don't. I, you know, this really wasn't more about gentlemen than it was about Mara. Like like my my bitching and 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 my concern was was not. A, Hello. Under the Dan? impression that this team there you go. is close whatsoever, um, so I, I, I wanted a younger GM. I wanted, you know, I was hot on on, on Cassiro. Um, I was hoping that they would at least sat down with him. Uh, it, so it, it, it's not that I don't have faith in Gentleman's ability to judge football players, build a team, and and, and I don't like his philosophy. I actually am a, am a miserable old fuck much like Gettleman. I mean, I, I love the fact that he'll cut some of these guys at the drop of a dime. My thing is that the Gettleman signing pretty much gave, you know, complete clarification to the fact that they are under the impression that this team is extremely close because, to me, Gettleman was more of a quick fix as opposed to a long-term solution. So uh, I don't – Gettleman, you know, I'm fully expecting that he's going to put his best foot po- best foot forward. I think that he'll shake things up. I think that, you know, I think that he'll do a good job of putting a competitive team on the field. I just hope that they're not biting off their nose to spite their face for the future, for the next decade of this franchise, trying to win in the next three years, and they pass on one of these quarterbacks that ends up being a stud to the year 2030. That's my concern right now. I still think they take a quarterback. I know what everything's getting said. I, I still think they're taking a quarterback. I personally think they're trying to do everything to say they're not. They don't want Darnold because I think they want Darnold. I, I, got, I, I got news for you. Here, here, here's the thing. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm pretty much to the point where the season's been over. Uh, You're cutting out, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. And and um, I, I just hope that they, they better be right because if they're wrong about Webb and Darnold, Mayfield, Rosen end up becoming studs for the next 12 to 15 years, you got a lot of explaining to do to your fan base especially if you're wrong about Webb and you end up looking for a quarterback in the next two to three years and these kids are coming into their own and you passed on them. Yeah. So it, it, you, you better be right about this decision. We're not going to know about it right away, but it's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out because we're going to be tied to three or four different guys because of where we are in the draft. So no matter what happens and no matter what pans out, even if they pick a quarterback, that quarterback is always going to be compared to the other two or three quarterbacks that are going to be coming out right around them. And if you don't take a quarterback, then Davis Webb is going to be compared to these quarterbacks for the next 10 years. So it, it's, you know, it's a huge moment in this team's franchise right now. And no matter what decision you make, it better be the right one because it could end up killing us for the next decade if it's wrong. And is, is it all that's what I'm scared about. Are we going to are we take captain the, negative? Are we taking the worker over the talent? Obviously Davis Webb's a worker. It bounced. Shoulder Which, tilt. You know what? I love that's it. His work Pretty. ethic. But does he have the talent to even match up Bounced, with those guys? Shoulder tilt, if they're worth that work ethic, is at the same it. level? Pretty. I mean, that goes back to what I said uh, 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 an hour ago, and, and that was it's lined up outside. Ball. How we started off the show. One of the first things we spoke about was if I, I read it's recently, up outside. Davis Ball. Webb was coming out of the draft this year. He would be the tenth it's quarterback lined up prospect coming out That's of the draft. It. And if you believe that stuff, and 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 so I, I you know, so I, I try not to take that stuff with a grain of salt, but 
mm-hmm. you know, you you look at it and you say it, it, if that holds any water, they better be right, guys, about this decision if if they're going to go with Davis Webb and not. And and you don't know. I mean, right now, I mean, it could all be bullshit coming out. I mean, you don't know the information that's coming out. Can all be smoke screens. They could 100%. be leaking stuff. They could be leaking stuff just to to try to say, hey, we're out on a quarterback so that people are like, hey, you know, we're, we're going to – just to see how big of an offer they can possibly get for that pick, knowing that they're going to take a quarterback the whole time. You know, you, you don't know, um, but because of where we're sitting, it's going to be a fun two and a half months with free agency coming up. It's going to be a fun month of March. It's going to be a fun month of April leading up to the draft, and we're going to get to the end of draft. Well, in around what eight, nine, ten weeks from now, and yeah. man, it, 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 we're going to go live during the draft. I assume, much like <clears> we <throat> did last year, we'll corner it yeah. around. And I think if, if with the Giants picking it too, unless there's a trade prior to the draft, we'll probably uh, get on early that night and go right around eight, eight thirty in line with the Giants pick. And you know, it, it's going to be fun leading up to that. And it's an exciting. Oh uh, yeah. Considering what this year has been. This is an exciting time of year to be a Giants fan because it's uh, optimism renewed, and you know it's going to be. There should be moves made that at least get us get get our Pistons fire in good, bad, or indifferent leading call, up to next call season. It, so call it right now. Call it right now. Are, uh, what is going to be the first free free agent signing by the Giants? Norwell. Norwell. Yep. Absolutely. He's going to be the highest paid guard in the league. And then, and then I, I think the next signing will be um, uh, the the middle linebacker. Uh, his, his name's escaping me right now, but I think he's a good fit. The middle linebacker from the Cardinals. I, I, I think they'll oh, make a move to bring him Mr. over. Mitch, yeah, Mitchell, I think they'll make a move to bring him over um, in better oh, scheme. About, uh, I think that Cannon. I think that would be I think that would be a really solid move. I like that kid a lot. Um, so I, I, I think Nor I think Norwell's the gimme one. And if you're asking me for a, a, a more of a guess, more of a legit shot in the dark, hot take on it, uh, it, it would be the kid from the Cardinals, the middle linebacker, Minter. Yeah, I, I like it. What, what, what do you got, Todd? What do I have? What? Oh, uh, first free agent signing? Yeah. Um, I'm with Noel. First with Justin. I think he, that's, he's a huge priority. And my second one, I, I, I can't give you 100%. I can't even give you a really fully-minded, thought-out guess. But because I think offensive line is so much a focus for us this season, uh, in the offseason, my second one would have to be uh, Josh Sitton. Not a good. bad one. Not a bad okay. one. I think those two as our guards would be a huge upgrade. Well, definitely. Without a doubt. Mm-hmm. Just, I mean, obviously, uh, Tim. obviously we guys – Obviously, we gotta say Norwell. I, mean, I think that's um, the, the obvious one. So let let let's throw it, Norwell out as a wash. And so as far as the next one, I I haven't looked at the, the tackle group. I think they're gonna definitely go out and sign a tackle. Now, I don't know if you would count it as a free agent signing. I really think the Glenn thing is is going to have legs. I think Glenn's going to come to us. It could be, honestly, Glenn for Eli Apple. You know, I would take it. Like, Anything to get Apple out of here, I would take it. I think Buffalo would really need their fucking head examined if they made that trade. <laughs> I just, I just, I don't. Well, I don't. I w- we would probably have to add a pick. We I, mean, I don't. I, I mean, if I'm like Buffalo that, and you come to me with, the, with, I want Cordy Glenn, and I'm like, all right, what's your offer? And you said Eli Apple. The minute you said, the minute it, it wasn't, I didn't hear the mm, instead of the uh, I'd hang up the fucking phone. <laughs> well, the, you also got to figure cap wise, it would help out Buffalo because we would take that big contract off. Uh, hopefully, we would get that reworked with Cordy Glenn. Eli, yeah, would come I, I, I'm almost Eli inclined. Would come I'm almost. In, how, how about this, Buffalo? Forget about my number two pick. Give me the number twenty-one pick and your second round. Give me the number twenty-one pick, and I'll give you Eli Manning. Give me the number twenty-one pick, and Cordy Glenn, and I'll give you Eli Manning and my number. I'll give you a third-round pick along with it. Hey guys, uh, we got the CEO on hold. Buffalo wants a young quarterback. The CEO's on hold. 
Yeah, I see you on hold. Oh, Jesus Christ, we're in trouble. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. How long was I on hold for? He, he, uh, he, I don't Mar- I I, when, when you When you press the button, Marco, the time erases, so I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. I've been on hold for like 35 minutes before, so it's all good. Well, that no, was on purpose. That on purpose. This was an accident. Yeah, we do that to you. <laughs> Fight me. Just, Fight me. We, we, we didn't, we didn't intend for that to happen here. to Marco. Yeah. So what what did I miss out? I'm in the beautiful state of Florida, enjoying the What's sun. What's the temperature? You bad. Oh, we're What's so the close, man. It was uh, it was the yeah, high today was 80, 80, yeah. 89. What wow. a guess! Look at that! Oh, Look at that! Jesus. Uh, uh, where in Florida are you? In Miami. I'm, I'm, I'm in Orlando. I'm in my high 70s in North Carolina. Yeah, uh, Mark, Marco has kids. Mar- 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 people with kids don't go to Miami. People with kids go no, to Orlando. True. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. We just stay a little north, okay? Just, we're almost yeah, there, it, but yeah. not quite. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They could smell Miami and all the fun people are having. They're in, they're in Orlando walking around with kids 24 seven. That's like more work than a big, it's like more work than work. You know, you know what I wanted to bring up? I don't know if you guys touched on this, but I, I would work Brandon Marshall's deal, redo it, bring him down to veteran minimum and give him the year. Let's see what he got. I would too. I would too. And I'm over him. I'm over it. I'm not. Yeah, I'm sort of much. over it too. I'm sort of over I was the a whole fan thing. Before he was from New York Giant, man. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm I, sort of over everybody. If it was a few <laughs> years ago, I would say sure, but whole roster gone. It was James an injury. <laughs> yeah, I want a roster reset. I want like when you go to Madden and you start a franchise mode and you can do fantasy draft. Like that's what I want to do. <laughs> Dude, I do yeah, that every me. single day. I have, I make like three different teams a day. I'm not even kidding. Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's an addiction. It's an addiction. I'll tell you what, James, let me ask you a specific question since you want a clean house. You get the clean house. You only get to keep one player. Everybody else, clean house. Who are you keeping? Ooh, that's a good question. I, I'm, assuming, um, I'm assuming it's it's between Landon get, and Odell, but I I think it's an easy pick. But let's see what you want. Oh, it, it Odell didn't even come to mind. You could throw Odell out the window. That's wow. not yeah, that's not somebody wow. I would take in a second. I'd get no rid of him in a second. Way. In a second. Oh. In a second. In hey, an absolute you are second. Come to blows. You, I'll beat the shit out of you, and I'll beat some sense into you come if you me. want me to, because that's <laughs> exactly me. what would happen. I don't. I don't. What, diva wide. I, I'm not infatuated with diva wide receivers. I, I've seen. I, I've seen teams win with, with wide receivers named Stephen Baker, uh, wide receivers named Mark Ingram, wide receivers named Lionel Manuel, Lionel wide receivers named Phil McConkey. I, I don't. Yeah. It, it, it. It's nice for, to have a highlight play and all that stuff. And great. Whoop did he do? And his talent is awesome. I don't need a wide receiver to win a Super Bowl. Um, I, I think that if I was going to take, if I was going to keep one player on this roster, I think right now it would probably have to be Landon Collins. And oh. That's it. That's the only guy I would. He take. he went down though. He like he but, definitely went down, Odell, but that's how bad I think. The, that's how bad. That's how bad I think the roster was this year. You see how long it took me to answer. Yeah, I did. I did. If my second answer me, would probably I, be, and you know what? I think I would change that. I, I, I think that uh-huh. I think that I would change that. I, I, I think that I would keep Sterling Shepard. No, out of everybody, Sterling yes. over Odell. Yeah, because I, I think on. Odell's a fucking retard. It's not about that. <laughs> it's about starting my team. With, uh, uh, I, I, it's, it's dude. If I can, I'm keeping one guy. So obviously, I need another yeah. fifty-two. So yeah, it's but, not like that one guy is going to be able to do it all by himself. So if I'm keeping one yeah. guy, give me a hard worker, give me a young kid, give me a guy that so far has kept his damn mouth shut, except for the whole Adderall thing. Uh, I, I like Sterling. I, I like I, Sterling. I, I, I mean, I think I you're think taking. It, I think you're taking personal. Uh, personal. I, uh, I, I, did, I think I'm, I'm, I'm up with personal. James though. I, I'm well really? now on the Sterling Shepherd. I'm now with the Sterling Shepherd. Even though I really do like Sergey Shepard, he stepped it up this year. Pro- Prove me that he can't be a number one wide receiver if he needs to be. Landon Collins would probably be the guy I'm building my team around. 
Yeah, it would, you know it would be the Sterling or Landon. Because you know, I think the way I'm a defensive guy, I like my defense. You you're a new you're a new Giants fan. Um we're old school Giants fans. We grew up on defense and running the, give up on that. We grew up give on up defense on and that. running you the ball. Use that too much. Sometimes give hey man, sometimes you gotta throw in throw out the old to make room for the new. All right? You know who I think I would keep mad because you're getting pushed to the side. What? Why are we uh, not yeah. throwing Evan Ing- Why are we not throwing Evan Ingram in there? He's too young. Uh, right. I, I don't he know. He'll build, build around a tight end. Yeah. Yeah. You could. Build Would you? I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. In my opinion, a great tight end, like a great receiving all around tight end, is more worth it than any receiver. Like in my opinion, Rob Gronkowski is more like if I can have Rob Gronkowski or Jerry Rice like prime and I don't have to worry about don't injuries, you fucking say it don't Rob say Gronkowski. it uh, I would take Rob and, 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 you're gonna have and you're and, and you're and you're and you're gonna and you're saying to me and you're saying to me that I I'm crazy because I would I keep think, Odell no, Beckham Jr. I think Rob Gronkowski is a more dangerous weapon than even Odell Beckham Jr. is and that says a lot because I think Odell's the best receiver in the league I think he's more dangerous when healthy. Did you did you ever see did you ever see Jerry Rice play? To be fair, I did not. I only watched his like highlights. I've only watched like highlights. Uh, then, then, highlights then, then don't it's ever enough. then don't ever 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 say what you just said again ever ever. As much, as much as I hate the Forty ers as much as I hate yeah, the 49ers. Yeah, it's not even about that. Yeah. It's, it's not even about how much I, I dislike the 49ers. It's, that's Jerry. Jerry Rice is the like, I'm insulted by, by that comment. Todd, I got a question for you. He's who, the greatest wide is, receiver ever. That's like somebody great. telling me that is. Terrell Suggs is, is better than, like, Terrell Suggs is better than Reggie White. Like, what? Right. That's yeah. not a comparison. Don't know. <laughs> who... Who did the NFL Network name as their top number one player overall? Do you know who it is? Number one player overall Donald. in the league? I don't know who they rank. All time. I think it's Aaron Donald. All time. Oh, All time LP. in the league. LP. Yes. No, it's not LP. LP. Well, then they're stupid. Jerry Rice. L- LT was two. Jerry Rice was one. That's how dominant Jerry Rice was. Jerry no, Rice was absolutely ridiculous. Who didn't hate the 49ers? Oh, I God. Think, uh, I still hate the 49ers for, for, think, for, you know, for the I mid-80s. I didn't because of where I grew up. Yep. I grew up in Texas. I have no reason to hate them. No, you do if you're a Giants fan. Yeah. Okay. You, I don't believe we need like to give you a your favorite team is this team. You have to hate this other team. I don't believe in that. Oh my God! Really. You know what? That's that, that's the problem with these millennials. You know what? Go vape. Wear your skinny, <laughs> go go, wear, go vape. wear your skinny jeans. Go vape. Wear your skinny jeans and bitch, I don't even wear bitch in your bitch in your coffee shops. That's a lie. You definitely have a closet full of skinny jeans. Show some respect to your baristas. Show some respect. <laughs> your mocha latte is fucking ready, Todd. Uh, currently in the league. <laughs> <sighs> I think I, I've asked this question to you guys before, but because so much has changed on this team now, I want to re-ask the question and see how different everybody's answers are. The question Jeez. is, and I'll, I'll give my answer first. You, you can take one player in the entire NFL right now and move them to our team. Who is it and why? Now nah, you don't have to give why. Uh, uh, I'll give my answer first. So Mine easy. is still Luke Keekly. It, it is, it Mine is, is so still easy. Luke Keekly. Who is yours? No, it's not Luke Keekly. My Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers, next. That's it. Nah. Case closed. Too old. I'm thinking long term, Luke. Oh, Too no, old. No, 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 never mind. You have a point. He's never mind. You have a point. Never mind. I'm, I'm thinking. You have a, you have a point. Aaron Rodgers is only in the Super Bowl. I just want to put it out there. Hmm. Yeah, but Aaron Rodgers also has like never had a really good defense. Hmm. I don't agree with that. Hmm. I do. But I'm moving Luke Keekley. No, that's how Either not. him or Aaron Donald. Either him or Aaron James Donald. Is Aaron Donald James is I'm gonna trying to think of young. No, I, yeah. I'm trying to. I'm trying to think of. I, I'm honestly. I, I'm trying to think of young quarterbacks that I like. I'm trying to think of young quarterbacks that I like. That's where my head is right now. Carson Wentz. Jimmy Garoppolo. I don't want to say. I think that 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 would be. I think that would be the guy that oh, I would okay. go with. 
Garoppolo. It was one step away from Belichick, uh, Marco. Garoppolo. It was one step away. <laughs> I feel like Garoppolo. I really like Garoppolo. Big fan. One, one, one degree away from Belichick. But six I, degrees I Six Donald degrees of Bill Belichick. Belichick. <laughs> oh, God. As far as. Could you guys imagine, like, the dream coach team have uh, Pat Shermer at office coordinator, Belichick at head coach? The dream team? First of all, Shermer is not my dream team of coaching. As much no, as no, I'm definitely not. not. Shermer. I'm a huge Shermer <laughs> fan, dude. Shermer oh, is my. actually on my team of coaching, not my dream team of coaching, okay? <laughs> yeah, dude. He's mine. First of all, we we saw the dream team of coaching when they were coaching us in the 80, 86. That yeah. was the dream team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are the guys that shut the down Jerry team. Rice. That's not fair to me. Yeah, go go those are the guys that shut it's down Jerry team. Rice. It's not fair. <laughs> you guys got to stop talking about this old team. It's not fair to me. I have no God, idea. You know what? I want you to go back. I'm too good at coaching staff. Uh, on the 86 Go watch team. the games. Go watch the games. Where are they? It's 2018. Go find them. If there's a will, there's a it's goddamn it's way. Are you kidding me? It's on YouTube, man. There's YouTube. I tried. You find I all of it. To find them. I can only find, like, 2005 games or something like that. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> I want you guys to look up, seriously, the 86 coaching staff. And just look at that coaching staff. And then look around the league. And how many head oh, coaches, ridiculous. top top assistants. <sighs> We're on that coaching staff. That's a that's our dream team coaching staff. It's absolutely ridiculous how good that coaching staff was. The Parcells tree. Mm-hmm. Is they were so lovely. good. The Parcells tree. The lovely tree. Marco, yep. how's Isaiah hey, Thomas treating you? <laughs> how's who te- treating me? How's he Isaiah? doing? He's he's about six inches too short. <laughs> he is. He is. He's admirable. He's fun to watch. He is fun to watch. Isn't he fun to watch? He's fun to watch, but uh, they, Magic Johnson is destroying my team. I can't even. He did. He did it to me when they when he coached. I was like, no, please, let's hire someone who would actually actually coach in in uh, what was that ninety four ninety five? Yeah. Like, oh, well, I'm pissed because he, he made Cleveland better. I'm like, you fucking <laughs> dick. Like, what do you – how could you fucking jerk <laughs> off? Like, we're not going to beat Cleveland now. Like, uh, I thought we actually had a shot. We're not going to beat them now. You're an asshole. Yeah, if I, I, I was furious. Yeah, I, I liked that Rodney Hood <laughs> signing. Or that Rodney Hood part. Yeah. Like, he, he was under the radar. Now, no one talks to him because he's, he's in Utah. Jeez. They killed that uh. trade. LeBron did a nice job making that deal. He, he well, I, I get credit to Boston and get rid of Isaiah Thomas when they did. What's up? I give Boston credit for getting rid of Isaiah Thomas when they did. Fucking Danny Ainge, they, man. They literally were making the trade and probably laughing. Well, so look, you look, Isaiah mean, Thomas? Look, not, okay. not even that. Like they they made the, they made the trade. What what about trading back from one to three? I mean, right now. Uh, that looks like a uh, genius move. Yeah, first of all, you you ripped us off in the Sixers. Mark Markel Fultz blows, <laughs> and and you got the you got the better you got the better rookie and moved down a pick and moved down. We moved down two pick. picks. Yeah, That's unbelievable. No <laughs> oh, I wanted to bring something up with you guys. I want to try next week maybe doing the. Doing instead of using box talk video, maybe we should try Discord again. Whatever you want to do. What? We would do the I don't show know what using Discord. Is. It's an app on your phone. It's that instead thing of people calling Tim, in, they that, just go on their app. That thing that we use. Like, ah. Uh, uh, I know you didn't forget that. No. Open that back. The only thing with Discord is, as far as people calling in, that's going to be an issue. It's, 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 it's the issue isn't in calling in, it's uh, having them come into the chat. But I told you all, the Discord, the way I have it set up, I have the channel locked. So in order for them to join our chat, they have to be dragged in by me or Marco or somebody like that. So it's not like people can join in freely, but they can join in, and then we move them into the chat one by one. Hmm. Are, 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 are people even on? Off air. We're on, I think we're on Facebook. I'm not even – I have no clue. No, not, not today. Facebook won't let me go on. 
Uh-oh. We're, on, we're on YouTube right now. We're, we're just on YouTube. What yeah, on yeah, we're on YouTube right now. We're killing it. I can't. I can't do Facebook uh, remotely. I have to be. I have to have the both programs running side by side. Got to be. Got to be on the phone. Got to be at, at, at the home base. Yeah. 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 All right, Hold guys. Well, I am. I am calling it a wrap this evening. I am exhausted. Good, I, am, good, I, am, right? I am as well, guys. I think so, we all did great. <laughs> great, great, great. We will uh, reconvene next week. 10 out of 10. All right. Maybe we'll all right. maybe we'll plan our mock draft for the next couple.